Hey guys, DM Cubing, and today I present my tutorial on making a magnetic Yushin Blue 4x4 speed cube. Hey guys, this has been my most requested video. I've received more requests for pe from people saying, can you make a tutorial on making a 4x4? I finally got around to doing this. It's really an easy mod. It's a lot easier than I had anticipated. As a matter of fact, the most difficult part of it is actually reassembling the cube, but magnetizing it is a breeze. Polarity is quite simple, and I'll, I'll show you briefly here. I'll just show you what I'm talking about as far as the polarity being easy. What we do is we start off with one half of one edge piece, the one that has the little socket holes here, and we're gonna put two magnets. We're gonna put one at the right and then one at the left, and these, these magnets oppose each other, so when you're putting in the second magnet, it's not gonna be a situation where it's gonna wanna jump across the piece and, and end up on top of the other one that you just glued in. Anyway, this piece sets the polarity for the entire cube. As long as you have this single piece in your 4x4 replicated, repeated over and over, magnetized the same exact way, your 4x4 will be perfect and it will have perfect polarity. So that's really simple. Um, I'm doing it on a Yushin Blue. Uh, my next project's going to be a Wu Kui or Wu Shei, however you pronounce that cube. They're very similar in design. Uh, matter of fact, they're almost identical as far as like how they're put together. Uh, they, there may be a difference between the, uh, the gauge of plastic. I'll find out when I take mine down and I, I measure it. So that's going to be my next project, I think. But uh, anyway, I'm going to present my project here. Um, everything that you need to know about magnetizing a 4x4 speed cube. Here we go. When we magnetize a 4x4, it's like magnetizing two 3x3 three three cubes at the same time. Uh, procedure-wise and time-wise. This project may take about three hours from the initial disassembling the cube to gluing in the last magnet. And I actually like to let things sit overnight so that the glue is hardened and cured before I reassemble. Then you'll want to add an additional about 30 minutes of reassembling the cube. And when we get to that part, I'll point you to a very good uh, video of showing you how to reassemble your cube. Now, a word about the magnetic strength in a 4x4. The general idea is, is to have your inner layer slightly stronger than your outer layer. This way, your outer layer is not putting an influence or, or moving the inside layers. You're moving the outer layer. Uh, the N52 3 by one5 millimeter magnets that I used on the inner work great. I don't think I'd change them. Since this was a prototype, I used the same magnet throughout the cube. So the 3 by one5 on the outer layer is really too weak. You really don't feel any magnetic attraction at all. Some people are using an N35 4 by 2 magnet on the outer layer, and other people are using an N38 4 by 2 I'm just at my very early prototype stage of 4 by 4 cubes, so... I'll probably experiment with an N38 4x2 on my next cube. So what do we need? We need 96 magnets. The N52 3x1.5 works great on the inner. I'm going to need something a little bit stronger the next time, like an N35 or an N38 4x2 on the outer. So that's what I suggest. And the glue that I use is Gorilla Brand Impact Tough Formula. It's a thicker type glue. It's not quite a gel, but it's thick enough that once the magnets are placed in it, I can move them around a little bit without them becoming instantly stuck on the plastic. It's a great glue. It, it takes a little bit longer time for it to completely cure and dry, so that's something to keep in mind, but it's a very good glue. Once you've disassembled your cube, separate all the cubey pieces from the rest of the parts. Now they're going to be like a zillion different pieces. We don't need those. At this point, all we're concerned about are all the corner pieces and all the edge pieces. We'll be disassembling the corner pieces into three parts and the edge pieces into two parts. Out of the edges, we're going to be looking first at the part that has the receptacle holes, these little posts that have holes in them. This is the first part that we're going to be gluing. There are 24 of these. This is the part that we glue the pair of magnets that oppose each other and set up the polarity for the entire cube. Then we're going to match this half edge piece to one third part corner and then to the other half edge piece. Now let's gather up all the edge piece halves that have the socket holes in them. We'll start the gluing process by gluing a magnet on the right side of this piece. 
As with all of our cubing projects, we look inside the cuby pieces to find a place where we can position the magnet time and time again in an exact location. This is usually at the bottom of one of these receptacle posts as it is here in the 4x4. Here we start with the right side and then we'll finish up with the left side magnet. And anytime that you're doing a magnetic conversion and you find this good location in your edge piece, you need to make sure that when you align your corner piece third to the edge piece that there's also a good place for its magnet to line up with this magnet. And in the case of a 4x4, not only are we aligning a corner piece on one side of this edge piece, we're also aligning another edge piece to this edge piece. So we're having two edge piece halves and one corner piece third. Hey guys, this is an insert video, kind of an addendum to uh, the tutorial that I had planned. Uh, as you know, in, in that tutorial, in the Yushin Blue, I used all the same grade magnet, a uh, N42, I mean an N52 3 by one5 millimeter magnet as you see here. And in the updated, uh, my next one, I'm going to use a 4 by 2 magnet. So there are going to be some differences in the uh, tutorial and I thought, well, I can put this little video in here to show you how we should match up both stacks of magnets. Uh, it's important to put a little piece of paper on one end of the stick of magnets. So what I'm going to do is I just linked up the small magnets to the large magnets so they're attracted right here and I'm going to pinch off this last magnet right here and using one of these mini cubicle receipts that I have see I, how I tear off a little edge there what I'm going to do is put a little piece of paper between those last two magnets that you saw there so it looks like this here we go see that and then see how it goes in like that and then on the last two magnets of the smaller end of magnets, I'm going to put a little piece of paper. So hang on for that. And do this off camera because it's a lot easier for me to see. You just need a little piece of paper there to kind of indicate where we're going to remove the magnets from. So see, that's going to be the end of the small stat stick. And this is the end of the larger magnets. And then we just take it apart right here. So this, these magnets will be used for this. Let me get something to point at here so you can see. Let me zoom in too. The 4x2 magnets will be used here. Between this edge piece and the corner piece. This is where added strength is needed right here. The smaller magnets... Well, oh, see, they're repelling each other. The smaller magnets, the 3 by 1.5s, will be used between this half of the edge piece and this half. So small magnets here, right here. Large diameter magnets right here and here. So as I continue this video here in a minute, the first magnet, let me just move these guys. The first magnet that we'll place will be a 4 by 2 millimeter magnet in here right here. I'm using it. This is a Wukwe to demonstrate. As you can see, they're very close in, in uh, design to the, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, to the Yushin Blue. Let's see if I can kind of lighten it up so you can see inside here. Yeah. The rest is going to be blown uh, a little overexposed, but see, that's that little nook right here where we place the drop of glue and um, something I've been doing, actually Ghostcuber sent me a video and I said, oh, that's really cool, but I've been doing this. Sometimes I don't demonstrate it is, um, you know, I'll put my drop of glue here and then a lot of times I will attract the magnet away from the drop of glue. Then I drag it in to place like that. Matter of fact, sometimes I'll actually start it at the back of the uh, QB piece and then just kind of pull it around so it's in place. And it, it really gets good and coated with glue, and it's sitting on top of the glue when you do that. So this will be our first magnet to glue, the 4x2. Then the second magnet is going to be on this side, and it repels. So as we're coming in, let me get rid of a couple of things here. We're coming in from this side. See, here's my piece of paper. But we're approaching this piece this way, removing the, removing the magnet this way. On this opposite side, we're going in 
from the opposite direction. So this too shows the end without the paper. So these two magnets, once glued, they repel. You can see how they're repelling right now. They don't want to get close to each other. So I just want to put this little part in the video. Okay, guys, back to the rest of the tutorial. Always place a little piece of paper between the last two magnets on one end of the stick of magnets. We'll be removing the magnets that we glue into this piece from the opposite end of the stick. We start the gluing process by placing a drop of glue at the bottom of the retaining post. We then remove a magnet from our stick of magnets and use it as a guide to slide the magnet into place. We wait a few seconds and then this magnet will stay by itself. We'll add an additional drop of glue on top of this magnet after we've glued the second magnet. To glue the second magnet, the one on the left, we place a drop of glue at the bottom of its post and we approach with the stick of magnets in the opposite direction now. Once you've confirmed that the magnet is in place, you can place an additional drop of glue on both the right magnet and the left magnet. Then we set the QB piece aside to let the glue dry. We're going to end up doing 23 more of these, so by the end of this stage we'll have used up 48 magnets. That's halfway through our project. We have 48 more to glue after this. In the second and final phase of gluing, we'll be matching up our corner piece thirds and the rest of our edge piece halves. Here we're going to use the larger diameter magnet on the corner piece third. We'll put a drop of glue on its side while make sure that the fronts of it and the other edge piece are lined up and then drop your magnet into place. It should fall into an exact alignment. Then we just come back by and put an additional drop of glue. Now we'll take a remaining edge piece half and put a drop of glue at the bottom of its post on the right side. We'll align it with the other two pieces by using its front edge as a guide. While using our thumb to cover up the magnetized edge piece half, we'll drop a 3 by one5 magnet into the new edge piece half. Again, make sure that the front edge of all pieces are lined up. This will make sure that the magnets are perfectly aligned. Then we'll add an additional drop of glue to the newly glued in magnet. We'll set this trio of QB pieces aside on a flat surface and continue the same procedure on the other 23 corner piece thirds and edge piece halves. Once you've finished gluing all the magnets, it's best to leave the QB pieces undisturbed. After a couple of hours, you may want to separate them a little bit and leave some air circulating. If you have a fan blowing and separate the pieces, this will prevent the super glue fumes from uh, fogging the black plastic. And I find it best to let the pieces sit overnight before I reassemble the cube. Now it's time to reassemble the individual parts that make up the QB pieces. I keep this card handy. This shows the color arrangement of the individual QB pieces. The left column are the edge pieces, so you see B O, B W, B R, B Y, etc. That's blue, orange, blue, white, blue, red, blue, yellow, etc. The right column are the corner pieces listed in, in uh, clockwise order, so B O Y, uh, blue, orange, yellow, blue, white, orange, etc. Those are the arrangements of colors on the corners. So I keep this handy. It just helps me make the cube or rebuild the cube a lot quicker than looking at one or trying to rely on my memory. I find it helpful to separate all the individual parts by color. This way I can just reach for a red when I need it or a blue, etc. And I've separated uh, one style half edge piece from the other style half edge piece. So one group of edge pieces halves, uh, have the posts and the other ones have the receptacles. This just makes the uh, rebuilding process go a lot quicker. The cube goes together really easy. I mean, there's nothing really more to explain here. Um, one thing to watch out for is on the corner pieces, make sure that the base goes together tightly. This little triangle has a tendency to spread. And make sure that your edge pieces are tightly closed together. 
If you have a question about whether or not your polarity is correct, it's a good idea to build the cube up into its cube shape without a core. Now that you've confirmed that everything's okay with your cube, that the polarity is correct and everything, it's time to reassemble. Now I've got a very good tutorial that I want you to watch. It's by IG Cuber. It's a new tutorial that he put out that shows you how to reassemble your 4x4 cube. I highly recommend it. If you do it like I did the first time, I didn't watch any tutorial. It took me an hour and 10 minutes to put my cube together. The second time I had to put a 4x4 together, I watched his tutorial. I did it in 20 minutes. So don't rush this. You really can't rush it, but I highly recommend IG Cuber's tutorial. The link is in the description here. So watch that, and that will show you how to put your 4x4 back together. Now, my final thoughts about this cube. I'm really not a 4x4 solver. I do mostly 3x3 and a little 2x2. So the 4x4 is new and the magnetic 4x4 is very new to me. Um, but I learned a lot. I know that I need stronger magnets on my, on my corners or in my corners from the outer edge piece to the corner. So those need to be 4x2, probably about an N38. I'm asking around that seems like what a lot of people like. Uh, I plan on doing a Wukwe, so that's going to be my next 4x4, and it's a learning process, so I'm learning and you're learning. So if you have any questions or comments or whatever, leave them in the comments section, and I'll see you the next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Happy cubing. Bye.